In this video, we're going to look at how to make histograms three different ways in Tableau. There's sort of a real traditional way of making a histogram using bins. We're going to show you that. And then I'm going to show you another way that I like to go about it. Hopefully everything will come together as we go. And we're going to start with the most simple approach and then go from there. So let's hop into Tableau and I'm going to connect to the Superstore data and we'll get started. What I want to do is jump. I'm going to jump, just jump in and we're going to start building. And uh, what I'm going to do to start out is build a couple calculations. My first calcula uh, calculation I'm just going to build is days to ship. And it's just going to be the ship date minus the order date. And that calculation is just going to be a numeric value and the number of days it takes to shift. Uh, ship. Let's bring that out columns, dragging it from measures, and then we're going to change this, click it on the arrow to a dimension. And then you'll see we're grouped by those values. I'm going to change it to dimension and also to discrete. It's going to create these blocks. So now we're just going to create a, a second calculation here that is going to be a new calculated field of total orders. And it's just going to be the count distinct of order ID and hit OK and we can bring that straight out onto rows and there you have it that's our first histogram histogram number one is just taking continuous data and changing it to be a, a discrete continuous dimension or sorry a discrete dimension on on one of our axes and then having a continuous axis on the other one that's an aggregate for our second histogram, we're just going to group values together. Rather than having individual numbers, we want to say like group values together. One example of that might be is that we've got individual product prices here, or the, at least the product that they're sold for. And we want to group some of these values together, particularly at the beginning uh, from the zero to a thousand. In fact, we might be doing by like 200 because they're very close together. So what I can do, so I can go down to sales on measures. I can right click and I can go to create. And then I can pick bins and we can create those bins. And we could hard code those values in to be 200. We could have Tableau suggest a bin size it's suggesting one. I think that's a terrible idea. Um, or we could click this drop down here and create a new parameter. And that's what I'm gonna do. It's gonna be called sales parameter and I'm going to uncheck this range of values and I'm going to type in 200 because that's what I want to start with. So we're going to create bins of 200. I'm going to hit OK. That parameter comes out on the view and then I'm going to replace sales here. I'm just actually going to get rid of it. I'm going to take that new calculation sales bin that we created that was created after we hit OK on the, creating the bin. Drag that out to columns and you'll see we now have groupings from 0 to 199.999, 200 to 399.999, and going on throughout. And you'll notice that with these bins, as we get up to these higher numbers, values will tend to sort of, they can skip and there will be missing values. That's because there's going to be no values that fit that bin. Now I'm just going to create a new calculation. Actually, I've already created it. It's total products. And I'm just going to click and drag that on rows and change my mark type to bar and we have a histogram that counts the number of products in that price range so from the zero to 200 price range there's 100 1567 products and that is how we create that second bin what you'll notice here though is that it does not label zero to 199.9 you just need to know that it goes all the way up until that next value and you'll notice on here that tableau I lied in that Tableau actually brings in and keeps those binned values that don't exist. There's no products here, uh, but Tableau is saying, you know what, I'll make that bin for you because the last thing you're going to want is like a bin of 5,000, then jumping to a bin of 8,000 and making it uneven. So Tableau is being really kind to us here. Thanks Tableau for being super kind. And then the last calculation 
that we're going to create to build a histogram uh, is one of my favorites. It's actually how I do it. I do more. Uh, actually, I want to go back. So before we jump off of this and go to the third way, just remember I have this sales parameter and I could easily have changed that value to a thousand and it changes my bin size on the fly. That's why it's great to have parameters built out so that and that you don't hard code values anywhere because it's a lot easier to go to the go on the fly and sort of build out any sort of calculation a lot faster. I just have to change one value. It changes my whole visualization. It looks a lot better. Uh, anyway, let's build out that third type of histogram. So for my last histogram, we're gonna do that binning process manually. We're gonna start by creating a calculated field and we're just gonna call it manual binning or manual bin. And we're gonna use a fixed calculation based on the aggregate we want to use on our histogram. So I'm just gonna say fixed and what we're gonna aggregate is that order ID again. We're just gonna get the bin total order pricing. And I'm just gonna say sum of sales. This is gonna give us, if we're looking at this level of detail calculation, it's gonna get the total sales by order ID for us. But what I wanna do is I actually wanna round these values. And how I'm gonna do that is I'm just going to take this total value and I'm gonna divide it by that same sales parameter that we had earlier. And then I'm gonna wrap all of this inside the floor calculation. So it's gonna bring that value down to whatever level, whatever number this is. Uh, and then I'm gonna multiply it back out by the sales parameter. This little trick here, what it does is it basically rounds it by the sales parameter value. So it's gonna round it to the nearest hundred based on the calculation we have here. And now I'm just gonna hit okay. And this manual bin, if I take it and bring it out on columns, and I change it to a dimension, and I change it to discrete. If you want to see it discrete, you can see it's by the nearest 100. Uh, I change it to 250, it changes it to 250. But right now, all I want to do is just set this value um, back to a continuous value. And I like to use continuous values because it makes it super easy. Uh, sometimes I just like to have a continuous access. And now I'm just going to take total orders uh, and bring that out on rows and change my mark type to bar. Now you're going to want to control your bar size. The best way to do this is just do like sales parameter times like 0 0.9. That's going to auto, auto auto size those bars. So I just, you know, double clicked here and I'm going to make sure that I treat this as a uh, minimum value. Uh, um, take that back. I'll treat it as a dimension. Doesn't like any of that. You know what? I'll build out the calculation myself. I'm going to take and create a calculated field, and this is going to be called bar width. Sometimes it's just ad lib a bit, okay? And we're just going to say sales parameter times 0.9. Again, I don't like to hard code things, but I just did it there. Uh, so, and take bar width and put it on size. Instead of using sum, we're just going to change that to a dimension. And now there's my bar width. It's exactly uh, 250 times 0.9. Uh, but I want to make sure that I'm not using manual. I'm choosing fixed here. And let's center those values. And there you have it. We've got those bars that are going to dynamically size. So now if we typed in a thousand here, the bar size automatically changes with me. And it's a histogram as well. Let's also just kind of add some labels in here. Boom. Now we got some labels showing up. And we've got this bar chart this histogram created on a continuous axis using sort of a manual way of building out this. What do we learn here is that the bin function is really nice. If you take a look at it, it does that binning process for us. It creates the spaces where we need it. it really kind of saves us a lot of work. But that bin, if we also take a look at it, um, we can create a continuous axis from it just as well. So maybe like the binning process is a lot easier than doing the manual process. Uh, let me just, you know, drop bar width on here so that we can see it and change this to, again, a dimension. Looks perfect. So I don't really use binning too much. I don't create histograms this way, but maybe I should be 
using them. It seems like it's a nice, simple way. And let me just add some labels here. Just kind of build out the visualization we want. I think, you know, I'm kind of walking away learning that the bin function is a lot more useful potentially than what I had originally thought. I kind of was always just doing this manual process, but I feel like the bin, the bin tool is actually really nice. That said, um, let's wrap this up. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, you learned three different ways to work with bars and bar charts. That said, that's the a wrap up here. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. We learned three different ways. Uh, if you like the video, um, make sure you like it though and let us know what tutorials you want more for Tableau. Uh, and also subscribe uh, to keep up with all the Tableaus we're going to be adding to this channel. We're really going to start to pick things up. Also, feel free to reach out to us at uh, Twitter at AskTestillation. There's also our links down below. Check them out. Thanks a lot. See you next time.